synonymous with England's victory over West Germany in the 1966 World Cup final. Sir Geoff Hurst is an icon of English football. The West Ham United legend made history when he fired three goals into the back of the net to become the first and only player to score a treble in the biggest game in football. Sir Jeff believes glory beckons for Gareth Southgate's young Lions and he joins us now. It's an honour to speak to you, sir. Good morning. Good morning, Martin. Good morning, Susanna. Oh, so lovely to see you. How excited are you for today, Jeff? I'm as excited as everybody else in the country. It's absolutely crazy, you know, during the pandemic as well, to see football coming back and the crowds now back at Wembley. Everybody's, uh, what's the, the current young word? Super excited. <laughs> it's fantastic. I can't wait till it starts. Just um, give us a picture of how Sir Jeff Hurst watches uh, England take on Germany at Wembley. Um, do you, I mean, I don't know if you were invited to be there or whether you're making the trip or whether it's sitting down in front of the television with, um, with a packet of crisps and, uh, and something from the fridge. It'll be a cup of tea and uh, a couple of biscuits when I watch the match around that, that time of the evening. So uh, <laughs> I can't wait till it starts. It's uh, huge expectations again and... Uh, it's a major fixture for us and the Germans over the years. So much has happened in, in the clashes between the two countries. Um, so I'm just as excited as everybody else to see the, the match itself. And I think we have a very good chance. I think Gareth has got a, a very good uh, group of young players, all very excited, very talented players. And not just the team, but he has a very good squad as well, which I think is very useful in, in, when you're playing in competitions. They can bring up to five or six subs on during the game who can make an impact as well. So I am uh, right at the beginning of the tournament, I felt we had a chance of winning and I feel exactly the same. So if we, if we go back to 1966, a different world without instant social media and news and coverage and cameras in your face everywhere. Mm. How was the build up for you? Did you, did you were, were you kept in a bubble? different time. Were you kept in a bubble back then and just went on and did your job or, or was the weight of expectation heavy? We were kept in a bubble. You're away from all the, all the media and everything else. Not, not, not that that was as big at the time. Um, for me personally, I, I didn't start the tournament. I'd only come into the, into the team of four or five games before the finals. So for me, just being there, I remember sitting on, on the bench in the first game against Uruguay, uh, the nought nought game when we were booed off, funny enough, after a very disappointing opening fixture. But sitting on the bench... Um, I was just happy to be in the England squad. I never dreamed I'd play for England. So the expectation and the pressure on me particularly wasn't particularly high. And, it, and as far as the team's concerned, we hadn't particularly done well in, in World Cups. In fact, we hadn't competed in a couple. Uh, we got beat by the USA in 1950. So the expectation then at that time wasn't as, as, as big as it has been over the years since we beat the Germans in 66. Mm. Yeah, you almost set up the, the expectation which the burden all the players today have to live with. I wonder, we never know, some of them might be watching right now. If they were, what would you say to them? What would you say to the players going out there tonight? What words from a living legend like yourself? It's a great chance for the team to beat the Germans and go on and win the tournament and create a uh, momentous time in their careers which will be remembered forever, believe me. I'm sitting here and the fans remember the game. They still talk to me about the game. And the legacy that these, these young players will leave will simply last for the rest of their lives. Uh, no question about that. It is momentous when you're playing in a, a national tournament, an international tournament like the Euros, like the World Cup, in your own country at Wembley. It is absolutely uh, fantastic. So they have a great chance. They appear to be in the right frame of mind. Gareth South Southgate's done a fantastic job with them over the last two or three years and uh, I fully expect them to get a result. But we're playing against a German team. I think the, the game against Hungary for Germany, the 2-2, sums the, sums the German team up. One, they're likely to give easy goals away, but two, they don't give in. And in Hungary, they came back in the last few minutes to get a draw, which got them through. So that's typical of a German side. They're beatable today, but they ain't going to give up for the 90 minutes or possibly two hours or possibly penalties. So, and the players understand that. I think the expectation of the players, they're not concerned too much about the past, quite rightly. It's about today, it's about tonight, it's about their lives. 
and the future of their lives, which they will be remembered forever if they get a result, not only tonight, but in the rest of the tournament. I don't think I can bear it if it's anything <laughs> like the two games which took place yesterday. I mean, two phenomenal matches and, of course, uh, France out on penalties. And, uh, you know, I just... I, I f you see, my issue about competition is somebody has to lose. And my heart goes out... Germany. ..to whoever has to lose. And the poor Mbappe, you know, takes the penalty, has to score, it's saved. I, you know, it, it's just heartbreaking. Of course, I'm on, <laughs> I'm on England's side, but I just... I don't, I don't think I can bear to watch if it goes anywhere like that. Well, you found it's a neutral watching that game. What about the poor fans of both France and Switzerland? You saw some of the clips of the crowd. I think one or two of the, the, of the team's followers probably had minor heart attacks during that game. It was astonishing, even, even as a neutral as I was uh, watching it. It was an absolutely unbelievable game. Very sad for Mbappe, not just missing the, have the penalty being saved. He didn't miss the penalty. It was a very good, a very good save. But also he had a very good a couple of chances later on in, in, in normal time or in, in, in extra time. So he'll be bitterly disappointed. But that comes with the sport. The winning and losing comes with the sport for the team, for the country, for the individuals. That, that's part and parcel of this fantastic sport of ours. I mean, that's, that's why sport is so good, isn't it? It's true unscripted drama. And even better tonight, it's drama that we're personally invested in with the pride of our nation and our support going forward. That's why we spent a news programme talking about it this morning, because it, it is what most people in the country, or most people in England, I should say, will be talking about. Now, so Jeff, I feel a bit cheeky doing this, but I have been asking all our other guests talking about the football today. If you wouldn't mind, could we have your view on what the result would be? Uh, England 2-1. Thank you, Sir Thank Jeff. Susanna. To say anything other than a win for England, I think I'd be shot. Quite. Well, <laughs> you, you said it. From your words to the football pitch result, we hope. Thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. I'm only here for three days to, to get Thank to you, talk Martin. Thanks. To, to, to a chap like you really has made my day. Thank you.